Roy, how many annuals are you laying out? I think about 900. 900. A little less than 900. How do you pick them? Well, pick them based on the, the, the selection of annuals is defined by the perennials they're going to live with. So I have to look at the growth rate and the growth habit of the perennials as they're coming up. And then we pick the annuals that would fit into that growth habit and growth rate of the plant. So they form a cooperative, more cooperative uh, community. So usually the angelonias are very good at that. I use a lot of angelonia. These uh, coleus we're using to pick up here and move them out in the shade of the entranceway. And uh, another good plant is a euphorbia diamond cross. Was there a color scheme that you looked at as well? Both uh, and the owner, she, she likes reds, so we picked out some cherry reds to blend in, and they're not a they're not a hard red, they're a softer red, the cherry red, and then the, 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 they seem to look nice with the uh, coleus. This is redhead coleus, and we don't use a lot of redhead. We just pick it up in moments as we go out the gate, uh, and then the coleus will be in the containers too that are around the house in the shaded part of the patio. So we have it kind of drifting through to have some kind of a rhythm as you walk through the property. And uh, and another annual, I mentioned Euphorbia Diamond Frost. That was uh, one that fits in well. And then uh, the Verbena Bonariensis we have in the back, just kind of uh, candling through the perennials with little bits of red too. So it's, it's not a very complex annual pattern. They're just mostly accent. It's not about creating a circus environment. And you know we're not creating a Disneyland. We're just creating something of subtle continuous color as the perennials come and go. So how do you know where to place your annuals? Well, here I'm, I'm actually filling in where things die. The carrots Elata aurea that's behind you, that uh, has done does well in more moisture, but it didn't have the irrigation system out here. So it declined and died. It's a, it's a difficult sedge in the fact that it likes constant moisture. So I'm just filling in the gap so you can see it dying here. So I'm just going to keep filling in and I'm going to put another sedge in there, probably social sedge, Carrick's socialis. It'll knit together through here and bond tightly together. And it'll go around the astilbe that are in here. The clumps are three years old, so they're mature clumps. So the social sedge will hit it and go around it and form a ground cover around it. So I'm just taking the vinca and I'm just going to mingle them in between the drainy immaculatum and the daffodils and just make a nice river of vinca here that'll take fill in and look nice at the entrance and then uh, the drainy immaculatum will be done flowering and they'll create nice mounds within the vinca so as things decline as the carex disappears we'll be bringing other sedges and other material to kind of knit everything together and then we'll leave space for the vinca and the red coleus will drift this way and around the fence and going into the gardens. So it's not an overabundance of annuals. It's mostly using annuals to accent the perennials that we're actually transitioning to that are healthier. Um, behind you, you can see Carex elata in bloom. And this is how it should look. This is a healthy one. And you can see it has a sprinkler head. So the Carex stay consistently moist because of the irrigation system. Look how nice it is. It's a great sedge. It just needs to be in a situation where it uh, doesn't dry out, get wet and dry out, and that weakens the plant. So we're just filling in, and we're going to garden it into something stronger. One other issue we have is the uh, Tritoscatchia andersonii, I think that's it, spreads everywhere. Spiderwort. Spiderwort. This, this is one that spreads by runners. The Tritoscatchia ohioensis and Virginiana, they can tend to recede in a lot of places initially if you have minimal competition to compete with the seedlings. But the uh, Andersonii, I think Andersoniana or something like that species, spreads everywhere. You see how it carpets? And I'll show you how it can be a nuisance. See how it's, cr how it's crowding out the astilbe? So it, it just spreads everywhere. So if you're a gardener gardening here, no matter how hard you work, you can only go home disappointed because you can never get enough done 
and the plant material that was put in just has put you in a position to fail. So how would you get rid of it? I would never use it. What we're going to have to do now is keep pulling it out, pulling it out, pulling it out, and wear it out. So I have to focus on this area, keep removing it, and every time we see it, make sure we get to it and keep thinning it, not letting it have an aggressive comeback, which is easy to do because there's a lot to care for, but now this is a focal point. We just have to dig it out with the crew here, and every time you see it come back, you just pay attention to it and, and then keep pulling it out.